Hello and welcome back to this class on empirical banking and finance. Now, after having talked about the course outline, we'll now talk about how to come up with your research question and some feasible design for performing your empirical research. And we'll start with some sources of inspiration, how to come up with your first research question. And we'll see that this can come from both the literature, but also hopefully from real world. So, to start, you have to think about and go back why you are studying economics or business management um, at all. You probably have a good understanding of what you are studying, what classes you have taken and which classes you are about to take, but what actually is it that you are studying and what is economics as a social science trying to achieve? And a very short and probably unnecessary reminder is that this our field is the social study that describes, analyzes and tries to explain the processes going on in an economy, all the processes surrounding the production, distribution and consumption of goods and services in an economy and everything that is related to it. Economic agents, the behavior of economic agents, um, the processes inside a firm, the mechanisms between firms, uh, on markets, etc. So a better understanding of an economy can help us optimize these processes, arrive at a better outcome, and this better outcome hopefully is higher employment, uh, higher GDP growth, and so on. So we are trying to create positive welfare effects for all economic agents and for society as a whole. And that's the ultimate goal of economic research. So why and when should we do research in banking and finance? Well, banks and financial markets form an integral part of all modern economies and they help other economic agents, more usually industrial firms, um, to perform in a better way, to um, generate more jobs, to create more employment, to help firms um, invest and that's why we're studying banking and finance mainly. So what is necessary for understanding economic processes? First of all we need sound economic reasoning. We don't do empirical research just because we want to do empirical research but we do this because we have a sound theoretical economic understanding of what is going on or at least we have um, a well-posed hypothesis of what should be going on or how a phenomenon could be explained and thus we arrive at a suspected relation for example between two variables. We expect that for example if banks do this then this will have an effect on A the banks and B maybe the economy as a whole and then we are trying to find empirical support for this suspected relation. So we start with a hypothesis uh, a theoretical model uh, or anything else that leads us to uh, a still unanswered um, hypothetical um, question. And the most important ingredient then is a clear identification of a causal effect. So let's, let's make a small example. Um, we argue that uh, banks give out more loans, so X is bank lending. And we suspect that Y is, um, let's say, GDP growth. GDP growth. And we suspect that X influences Y and that this relation is positive. That's our hypothesis. We can go to the theoretical literature and find some evidence and models for this suspected effect of X on Y. And then we need to make sure that we identify a causal link between X and Y. And it's all about cause and effect. And we'll be talking a lot about identification in this class, but um, just a small reminder, it could also be that Y actually influences X or that this effect is negative, more loans, more banking activity and smaller GDP growth for some reason and we need to find out what is going on. So where uh, do we get our sources of inspiration? 
We'll come back to identification later. So let's start with the question, where do we get the idea in the first place? Now, um, what features should a research question in economics possess ideally? First of all, it should be a new, it should be an open, it should be a still unanswered question. If we already know the answer, there's no need for new research. And it should be important and it should be relevant to some economic agents, to policy makers, to regulators, for example. And both features immediately point at a very useful and admittedly quite naive source of inspiration. Just go to the news. Um, get your idea for your first empirical study from newspapers, from the internet, from uh, TV uh, news, etc. Why? Because news will tell you of recent developments in the economy. It will tell you about recent political trends, crises, changes in regulation, actions of central banks, new products, financial instruments, problems. If you see a problem, that's always interesting to us as a financial economist because we, we, are, we are meant to find solutions to problems. And the problem is that often and many, many times journalists will describe these developments but they will lack a detailed analysis of the development of the problem of the situation. So some examples here. Will a change in regulation be successful in preventing a certain behavior or forcing firms to behave in a certain way? Will an increase decrease in taxes have its intended effect? Just a small example. Uh, the tax cut by the Trump administration. Very recent example. Are firms that do something more or less um, successful than their competitors? First of all, we need to think about what is successful. Then what effect do exogenous shocks have on firms, economies, um, and a um, topic that is not related to economics, but uh, you might know that on those uh, little cigarette boxes, you, at least in the European Union, you now see uh, most of the cigarette boxes uh, being filled by shock pictures of diseases caused by smoking. So are shocking pictures on cigarette boxes effective in reducing smoking related deaths? It seems that policymakers think that by putting shocking pictures on these boxes, they disencourage people from smoking. Um, and this is a hypothesis. You need to test this empirically. Um, just to give you some more ideas how you can come up with recent um, with ideas from recent developments well political trends uh, you right now see a lot of papers coming out on populism it seems that there is a trend in the western world for populist leaders uh, to be successful in elections um, so a recent political trend Populism is being studied in economics right now. Crises. Crises always make up good stuff for empirical research. And uh, right now you see a lot of people working on the COVID-19 crisis. Ten years ago it was the financial crisis. And in ten years we'll be studying the next crisis. Changes in regulation. Let's take Basel 2 and three and four and so on, just like solvency two in insurance. Those were major changes in uh, regulation of banks and insurance companies that have been studied in detail. Actions of central banks, well, um, just take anything related to zero interest uh, central bank policy. Okay, so, and did you notice all these questions are concerned with cause and effect. You have a change, you have a cause, and you're studying the economic effect. For example, a change in taxes, a change in maybe political agenda, a, a crisis that is exogenous, a change in regulation, another change in regulation, and a change in central bank policy, and the effects. Are firms more profitable? Um, do banks give out more loans, etc. So it's always about cause and effect. Some random 
examples. For example, this article from the Financial Times. Financial Conduct Authority, that's the supervisor in the UK, plus 500 profits surge despite clampdown on CFDs. Plus 500, the UK's second largest provider of contract for difference. That's a highly controversial um, derivative product. Uh, targeted at retail customers, reported a 20% growth in net profits in its record full-year results despite a regular regulatory clampdown that has cast doubts on the future of this industry. Now CFDs are highly controversial. Um, they are leveraged contracts uh, with which you can bet on certain development in financial markets and they are targeted at retail investors. And from this article alone, you can see some random possibilities for research. So we'll start with why are CFDs so attractive to investors? If revenues are surging, it seems that they are attractive to investors. Why do regulators step in? Every time you see a market in a free market economy to be regulated, you need to ask yourself, why do we need regulation? Regulation and the influence and uh, uh, the intervention of government is never efficient um, and the question is why do regulators step in? Is this step in justified? Then why are revenues still going up despite regulatory intervention? What are the possible risks for retail investors, companies, households, etc.? And how does the CFD market work? How are these contracts priced? Is the market efficient? Here it's about market microstructure, completely different from regulation, but nevertheless could be interesting. The second, even more naive way to come up with an idea for an own empirical analysis is to read, read and read recent empirical research, papers in research journals. Current research points you into the direction you might or should take. If, for example, you go to the uh, current issues of the leading journals in finance and banking, you will see a lot on zero interest policy and you'll see the first papers coming out on the COVID-19 um, crisis. So you might get some ideas on new methods, new data sources, new databases, still open questions and current problems from recent research. And sometimes the easiest way to come up with your own research question is just take the method from paper A, combine it with the data from paper B and look at an open question from paper C. This is not by any means uh, plagiarizing these papers but you're combining methods and data and open questions to come up at a new paper and this is totally okay as long as you're honest and if you cite uh, these papers and you have to be honest and if you ask yourself and see uh, that colleagues have already answered the question you're thinking about cut your losses move on next idea it's no use to work on a paper to work on a thesis uh, that has been sufficiently answered and the research question has been sufficiently answered some hints on getting ideas from the research literature. Read the A-level journals. These are the ones. It's the Journal of Finance, the Journal of Financial Economics, the Review of Financial Studies, the Journal of Financial and Quantitative Analysis, and with some distance, these are the top three, and probably the JFQA and the Review of Finance, you can include these. So this is the top five and the Journal of Money, Credit and Banking of the Journal of Financial Economics. Um, no, the Journal of Financial Intermediation is also very good. Um, these are the um, top major finance journals. And you might also think about some papers in field journals in economics and in the general interest journals in economics. These are the American Economic Review, the Journal of Political Economy, the Quarterly Journal of Economics, uh, Econometrica, and the Review of Economic Studies. Those are probably the best journals in economics. So read A-level journals. And a colleague once gave me the uh, hint, if you want to publish at the top level, you only cite top level. The more you read, you will see that 
um, the papers published in B, C or D level journals, the quality decreases steeply. So you should not start by reading C or D level journals, but start at the very top and later on try to mimic and uh, emulate those ideas from A level journals. Read journals outside finance. Might be that you will find some interesting ideas in econometrics, economics, or even marketing, psychology. And then you can combine not just ideas from different papers, but you can combine ideas and methodologies from different fields. Scan the abstracts, familiarize yourself with the way papers are written and structured. Research papers are, are not rocket science. It's always the same structure. One is intro. Two is related literature and hypotheses. Three is empirical research with three one being data. Three two being maybe the methodology. Three three being the uh, empirical res results. And section four is usually the conclusion. It's always the same structure and it's always very plain objective um, but uh, understandable English. And if you've read through all those journals, make sure that you also study the programs of major finance conferences because those published papers are usually two up to five years old because of the publication lag. And you need to look at the conferences of the American finance, Western finance, European finance, it's not the Eastern, but the European finance association, the American economic association, and probably the Financial Intermediation Research Society. Those are the websites, uh, those are the conferences of the major finance conferences. And if you see that there is someone who has published a lot on a certain topic, you can also go to the website of that researcher and study uh, the work he or she has done. So this is uh, a short summary of some source of inspiration. It's news. Uh, current events and the literature in finance um, and probably economics journals. And next, um, in the next video, we'll talk about unimportant versus important questions.